May 5th, 2016, Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The Word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that men and women die once, 
and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and in absolute trust, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. May 5th, the Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. The first reading comes from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. We hear that this is a writing of St. Luke by the introduction to this passage. This book is dedicated to Theophilus. Now, Theophilus might be the name of a Roman official whose favor was being curried by Luke. It might be a rich person who was paying for the copying of this book. Or it might simply be a code name for Christians. Theos means God, phileo, one who loves. So Christians are lovers of God. It reminds the community of how they were instructed by the Holy Spirit and how Jesus decreed that the witness to the gospel would go out from Jerusalem throughout Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. That one verse serves almost as a table of contents of the Acts of the Apostles because it lists the spread of the gospel from its center, from its foundation in Jerusalem, out to the ends of the earth. Now, the ends of the earth normally, in these days, would be considered the pillars of Hercules, Gibraltar. But we have to remember that Rome was also, in a sense, the ends of the earth, because while Jerusalem was the spiritual center of the universe, Rome was the political center. And at the end of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear how the gospel reached Rome, when Paul was taken there under arrest. Jesus is taken up in a cloud. The Son of Man is said to descend in a cloud, so the natural way for him to ascend would be in a cloud. Now, does that mean that heaven is above the stratosphere? That's understanding it too graphically. Heaven is a different dimension that coexists with this world. So it doesn't have a geographic location as such. Certainly, Jesus ascended into the clouds so that the apostles, who were a little bit dim-witted, might have a sense of where he was going. But the real ascension is that he disappeared from our presence to be fully with the Father. And we hear that two men dressed in white garments ask the disciples, why are they just standing there? Jesus has gone up to the heavens. Remember, there were two men dressed in white in the tomb. This is a repetition of that idea. For the second reading, there are two choices. The first choice, Ephesians 1, 17 to 23. It's a blessing called upon the community that they might be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And it reminds them that they believe in Jesus, who was raised from the dead by the Father and is seated at the right hand of God in heaven, and that he's received all power over every principality, authority, power, and dominion. Now, those are names of heavenly choirs, 
Jesus, who was born in the flesh, nevertheless has an authority which is far superior to totally spiritual creatures, which was an important idea for the Greeks because the Greeks believed that that which was spiritual was superior to that which was physical. Jesus, although he was born in the flesh, is nevertheless over every angel. The second choice for the second reading is Hebrews 9, 24 to 28, and 10, 19 to 23. This reading emphasizes the fact that Jesus suffered for our sins and we've been washed clean. Therefore, we can enter into the sanctuary. The sanctuary is our heavenly homeland, where Jesus has passed first of all. The sanctuary that was built by Moses was a prefiguring of that heavenly homeland. And now, because we believe in Jesus, we can enter into that homeland. The Gospel is from Luke 24, 46-53. This is the end of Luke's Gospel, and Jesus reminds the disciples that he had to suffer and die, rise on the third day. This is typical of the writings of Luke. There are three resurrection narratives in chapter 24. In all three of them, somebody reminds the disciples that what happened on Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday were simply a fulfillment of what had been foretold in the prophets and in the law. The witness has to go to all nations beginning with Jerusalem, much as we heard in Acts of the Apostles. And then Jesus ascends in Bethany. Now this is on the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives was considered a place where the events of the end of the world would take place. Therefore, Jesus' ascension is in a sense the beginning of the end of the world, as was his resurrection. We Christians are living in a new era, which is no longer measured by time as it was before. We're living in eternity. And may God bless us. Thank you.